Hey you guys, it's your girl Kelsey, aka The Shy Wonderless. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I do know if you have been watching my channel, it has been a while since I posted a video of me talking. Um, but as you guys can tell by the title of this video, that's basically why I just made a move from Georgia to Henderson, Nevada, which is about 20 minutes outside of Las Vegas, basically. Um, but I'll get into that. So my move was a pretty big move um basically because i did like i said by the title of the video you can see i pretty much sold everything and for the most part and moved across the country and it's almost a 2000 mile journey <laughs> from georgia to nevada so i wanted to start it off by letting you guys know firstly i'm going to give a quick disclaimer um because this is basically a how video, how I did it, how I moved um, across the country. I sold everything and moved across the country. So, I'm going to let you know, firstly, I am rolling on this journey uh, solo dolo. Um, it is just me. I am not married. I don't have any children. So, it was just me making this move. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you, if you decide to do something like this, um, I don't want you to, you know, have to say or try to say that um, I have something that you don't have or you have something that I don't have. So, you know, you can't do it the way that I do it. Um, but, I just wanted to put that out there firstly. Um, and then I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know, like I said, this is a how video. It's not, it's not a why. I am going to come back with another video as to showing why I moved, um, me getting more used to living in a new state, a new climate, a new all of that, um, in another video. Um, basically I'm going to come back with a video, um, giving basically an update with pros and cons of living here in Nevada. So, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into how I moved, how I showed everything, and how I moved across the country. Alright, the first part of this video, I wanted to talk about the the main thing, um, selling everything. Um, because that was basically a huge, huge part of my move. Um, which required for me to not have to have a mo mover. But, I'm going to get into that. So, the majority of the stuff that I sold was my furniture. I wanted to start over anew when I moved to um, Nevada. I wanted to be able to purchase new furniture and new decorations and all that stuff. I wanted to have everything different because this is it's not just really like a journey. It's just the fact that I'm moving to a whole new state and I just wanted to start anew. So what I did was I put all of the furniture that I knew I wanted to sell and get rid of on Facebook Market and I also put a lot of stuff on OfferUp. Now I do want to start by saying that I did not sell any item on OfferUp um, and I do want to also say that none of anything that I mentioned, any app, any product, any company, anything that I mentioned in this video is not sponsored. So let me go ahead and continue but I did use offer up um, and like I said Facebook market um, I put pretty much everything um, that I was selling on offer up and Facebook market but like I was saying I did not sell anything on offer up I did have a lot of people contact but none of the stuff like you know actually no they actually did not go through with making the purchases they were contacting and asking questions of course well offer up it's more based on you submitting an offer to purchase an item that you know if somebody already had a set price you want to try to get to lower that price but I mean that happens everywhere else but offer up is this that's what that's really based on you know that's what the whole process of that of that app is so I didn't sell anything there but I did sell the majority of the items on uh, Facebook market and also I had um, the apartment complex that I live and in Georgia they have a community board and I put a lot of items on there as well so most of the things that I put on there that I, I thought that somebody in my complex would want so um, some of the stuff actually did sell on there actually my my bedroom set I put my bedroom set plus a TV stand that could hold up to I think it's 65 inch TV I put that all together and I put that on the community board and a nice older couple they snatched that up real fast like I literally like the next day that I put it on there they were asking about it and they said look this we want to come see it 
and we want to come get it. So they did that. Um, so that that was pretty much the, the first big furniture item that I sold was my bedroom set plus that huge TV stand. And also on that website, there was a, a young girl that just moved. Um, she said she moved from Louisiana to Georgia um, last year, and then she moved downtown, downtown Atlanta, um, because I stayed in uh, the Atlanta metropolitan area. And she moved there, but she didn't really like living in the downtown area, so she moved more toward the rural area or the suburbs where I was living in Roswell, which is just north of Atlanta, Atlanta metropolitan area. Um, and she wanted a dining set that I had, and also um, it was like a flat screen curved TV slash, well, it was more of a computer screen. It could be used as a TV, but I was using it as a computer screen. She purchased that as well. Um, but everything else that I had, I had couch, chairs, um, all this other stuff, big TVs, all this stuff I sold on Facebook Market. So all of that stuff went pretty darn quickly. I had TV stands, TV, all the stuff I just know I wanted to get rid of. They came and got it. There was no issues with that. So I was able to sell that. And it pretty, pretty fast turnaround. Once I put that stuff on Facebook Market and on the community board, people were snatching that stuff like that. So that's what I was able to do when it came to the furniture. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was basically my items. Um, and that's going to kind of play into the next thing, which is pretty much the biggest expense that I had when moving. Um, because of the fact that I sold everything, I did have my um, my clothes and my shoes and stuff that I, I still had anyway. And a few kitchen items. Um, I wanted to ship my car basis versus hiring a mover that was going to move me across the country which is you know it can be, get expensive when you have you know furniture you got to get a moving truck you gotta get movers movers that are going to move you across the country there are a lot of movers are, are local a local um so i opted out of that that's the way the one of the reasons why i sold everything because that's another expense that i did not want to tack on to my my journey so i did ship my car and I used the auto transport company and again this is not sponsored or anything I used a company called Sherpa auto transports so I'm going to get into that but my clothes and the items that I was going to be keeping and moving with me I was able to pack that into my car the auto transport company had uh, a policy where you can put up to upward to a hundred pounds of your personal items in your car and your in the trunk of your car and the back of your car as long as everything was out of sight it couldn't be above the window line in the back of your car um, I didn't have anything in front of the car but in the in the trunk and in the back seat of my car and on the floor I was able to put some um, some items up there so back to the shipping company um, like I said, it's not sponsored, but I use a company called Sherpa, and I found this company online. I was Google, Googling and doing a lot of research because I wanted to make sure I found a reliable uh, auto transport company that I knew I wouldn't have any issues. I was making sure I was looking at reviews, um, how many people I was looking at, you know, their um, Better Business Bureau website, all that stuff. So, I found this company called Sherpa. I located it. It was actually on the Forbes um, Money Magazine, their website, um, on their top list. Um, I think it was a top five list of auto best auto transport companies. And I ended up choosing them. And what all the companies that I realized when I was doing our research, most auto tra transport companies are basically middlemen. So, when I contacted them, I... They, I, they told me the, the basically the rules. So I had to give them my information, of course, what kind of car I was shipping, how many cars. Um, I didn't have to give any any information about what was going to be in the car, but they did have like a list of what you can't have in the car and stuff like that, but I didn't have any of that stuff. Um, but I also told them uh, the addresses, you know, where they were going to be picking up the car, where they're going to be delivering the car. And what they did was once they took my information and gave me the, the price and they gave me um, all the information that I need, they let me know that I have a five-day window. So they what they use is when it comes to a five-day, when they say a five-day window, is you have a choice to... Um, request for your car to be picked up within that five day window and they give you a date it's not like you can say well i need them to pick it up on this day they give you a date within that five day window so i was moving 
on the second to last second to last week of August and okay so it was it was kind of I'm not gonna say it was stressful um, but it was a lot to think about because of the fact that I know they had a five-day window and I planned on flying out to Las Vegas um, airport on Wednesday of that week and I was just praying to God that they would be able to pick up my car earlier in the week because I chose for them to my five-day window to be between that Monday and that Friday of that week and I, like I said I was praying and hoping that they would absolutely pick up my car before I left that's that was my biggest my biggest concern my I wasn't really concerned about you know well I was concerned about them having to deliver the car um, but there was an option that if they if they weren't able to pick up the car while I was still in in Atlanta I did have a friend of a family that would be able to uh, do that process for me where I could leave my car at her house and they can come get it if I would just just to say that they were going to pick up the car after I left um, but my biggest concern was just them picking up the car um, and me being in Las Vegas for them to give me my car that was my biggest concern but everything ended up working out the driver um, what they did was actually like I was saying it's a middleman so a middleman so what they did is is once they got my information they they told me with the five-day window they said that closer to the date because I actually requested it about a month almost a month and a half before the move so they told me that there will be a driver that will be available to pick up my car uh, probably within the five-day window or just right before like a couple days before so like I was saying, as they are a middleman, what they do is they get your information and they put your, your information out on dispatch board for other drivers and, and companies that own you no know, trucks, the reliable companies and reliable drivers to pick up your, your request. So let's say once my request is out there and there was a company or a driver that said, that, hey, you know, we, we're going to have a couple cars on our truck and we're going that way, we're going to pick up her request. So that's what that's how they are a middleman. They don't actually Sherpa doesn't actually own any trucks or you know, they don't hire drivers. These companies are are they receive a dispatch from Sherpa and they have the choice to pick up your, your car or not. So that's how that works when I say middleman. Alright, so when it came time for them to actually pick up the car, I received the email from Sherpa and they told me, they let me know that there was a trucking company that was going to, they decided to pick up my, my request and they told me that the company would email me or contact me 12 to 24 hours before they were coming to get my car. So that's where my, my little... I would I wouldn't really call it an issue it was just things that I was stressing about because you know this is a huge move I'm you know trying to get myself plus all of my stuff in my car to another not just another uh, uh, home within Georgia but an, another city another state across the country so what happened was they didn't actually contact me within that time frame that Sherpa said that they were the company that ended up picking up the car. They contacted me, I would say, about three to four hours before they were going to come going to come pick up my car. He gave me, he let me know because I lived in an apartment complex and it was a you know, it was really it was a huge complex, but the streets were really tiny. I lived on top of a hill that was on top of a hill and they have these huge trucks. So I knew that they were not going to be able to come to me. So he gave me he was gonna give me an address. So he contacted me, the driver contacted me and he told me the address that where he wanted to meet me. It was gonna be a, a, a complex, basically like a shopping complex. So he can be able to have enough space to pick up my car with this huge truck. So like like I said, he contacted me about three or four hours before with the address and he was like, well, this is where I'm going to meet you. You know, I'll let you know when I'm close or whatever. I'll call. I'll he say he'll basically let me know about an hour before he gets there because, you know, he's looking at GPS trying to figure out what time he will get there. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. OK. Um, at that time, I was actually still putting stuff in my car. Um, it was Monday. Um, so they, they sent me that email, Sherpa sent me that email probably like on Saturday, on Saturday, the week before I was getting ready to leave and 
So the guy, he contacted me on Monday. I was happy about the fact that they were going to be able to pick up the car for me. I wouldn't have to use my plan B and have the friend of the family uh, do the car transaction for me. I was happy about that. But like I was saying, I was still putting stuff in my car and still getting rid of stuff that I didn't want. So using my car. So I'm like, oh shoot, let me hurry up and get the rest of my stuff in the car. So I did that. And I was able to meet him. I beat him there um, at the location where he wanted to pick up this car. So once we got everything figured out and um, the truck was actually, like like I said, it was a really huge truck. And once we got up to the, the shopping complex where he wanted to pick up the car for me, uh, it was busy. It was really busy. For a Monday, it was really busy. So he had to leave that. I was following him at this point once I got up, got up there and everything. He had to leave the, the shopping complex and, and like pull up on like a side street instead because there was no way. It was too many cars, too many people, too congested. So I followed him out there to like a side street. And after, you know, he got out, we said our, our greetings. Um, you know, he let me know that he would possibly deliver the car either Thursday, early Thursday morning or late, late, late on Wednesday night. So mind you, like I said, I was going to be flying out to Las Vegas to, on Wednesday night, my one-way ticket. So I'm like, okay, I'm so hoping that it will be Thursday morning instead. <laughs> but we're, well, I'll talk about that. But um, once he was able to let me know that information, he was a really, really, really nice guy, first of all. Um, then he had me set, uh, sign some information, some papers. Uh, well, it was electronically, but I signed it. And... He took a bunch of pictures and videos of the car and I took a bunch of pictures and videos of the car because if there was going to be happen to be damage on the car, I would have a before and after type thing. I was supposed to also, you know, take pictures and videos and stuff once he delivered the car to me. Um, but I did express my concern, letting him know that I, I told the company already that I was going to be flying out to Vegas Airport on Wednesday night and I'll probably get there at about 8.40, anywhere between 8.40 and 9 o'clock. And he was like, well, if I get there before you, I could possibly wait on you. Um, but I can't wait too long. I was like, I understand that. But like I said, you know, he was like, well, I'm going to try to, he, was, he basically was trying to work with me. And I was just telling him like, hopefully it'll be early on Thursday morning, but we'll, we'll get it figured out. He said he'll con stay in contact with me throughout the entire, um, trip. So he got the car on the truck and he rolled out. Now, like I was saying, when it came time for them to deliver the car to me, um, I did, like I said, have my worries and my, I was stressing and stuff like that. But luckily, I was indeed there. I was in Las Vegas. I had made it when it came time for him to deliver the car. So like, like him and I said we were going to keep in touch with each other throughout the process of the trip so when I landed in Las Vegas which was around the time that I told him was about 8 40 8 45 it was raining by the way but when I got here and I landed and everything I actually let him know once exactly when the plane landed and he was like okay cool um it looks like my GPS is telling me that I'm going to be delivering the car to you by about 1 15 in the morning so at first i was like oh my goodness that's really late as slash early but i was like okay okay this this is this will work what i can do is i can go take me a nap and you know i can meet up with him when it's time um so since i was actually i was not going to be moving into my new place until that friday and it was wednesday by the way i wasn't going to be moving into my new place and getting my keys until that friday so i had a hotel room on the strip so i was like okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna check in give me something to eat go take me a nap and i'm gonna wake up you know when it's time for me to go and meet him so i was, I, I was gonna have to uber to him to get the car from deliver it to me um because at first um, like I was saying, he was saying he was going to get there about 1.15-ish in the morning. So I told him to let me know, you know, if the GPS time changes. Um, eventually, actually when it was closer to time, it did change to about about 1.50 in the morning. Um, but it didn't after that. 
So at first he was trying to see if he could meet me like closer. He had like a truck stop in the area, in the Henderson area. And he tried to see if he could meet me in a truck stop because I knew he wasn't going to, again, I moved into another apartment complex here in Henderson. He probably wouldn't be able to get that big truck onto the parking lot of the complex. But there's also a, a, a facility with a huge, huge parking lot across the street from where I live. And I told them that I would rather meet him there because I knew it was a, a pretty busy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be people out there, even at 1 o'clock in the morning. It was going to be, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. It was going to be people out there. It's going to be well lit. This is where I wanted to meet him. So when it came time, I Ubered over to him. He uh, met me there, dropped off the car, we did the same thing. He took pictures and videos, I took pictures and videos of the car, and that was that. It cost about, actually the exact cost was $1,275 to ship the car, which I think was pretty reasonable. Um, you know, other companies, I saw there were other company, companies that were a little bit cheaper, but once you start started looking, once I started looking at their reviews and stuff, they were kind of like pulling the, like, um, what do you call it, the bait and switch? I think it's called a bait and switch where there was a lot of people saying that they would quote them a certain price when they called to make the reservation, and then once they get the cr trucker, and um, it's come time for the trucker to be assigned to get them get the car, then they'll double the price. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not falling for that. I, I went. That's why I went with Sherpa. They had a guaranteed price. Once they quote you the price, that's it. You know, they weren't going to tack on anything extra. There was no extra. So I think the truck driver, he did an amazing, amazing job. I think the, the company, just period. The truck driver, the trucking company, Sherpa as a whole, like I said, it's not sponsored, but I think they, they did an amazing job. I really liked how they how they operate it was just you know straight to the point i uh, come get your car you know we're gonna stay in contact drop off the car boom no issues no no damage none of that it was really awesome and also like i said the truck driver was extremely nice um not only did we you know we stayed in contact he was letting me know all about the process of the actual uh, trip that he made but we also we were I was contacting him like the night the night of right before I was getting ready he was getting ready to deliver the car to me we were just chatting we were just chatting about random stuff and we were talking about food and 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 things that that people like to do and things to do in Las Vegas and stuff like that and he actually thanked me for being very chatty with him because he was saying that he was like really tired and hungry and I know I know how it is with with truck drivers how it can be a pretty stressful job you know you're on the road you're coming from one side of the country to the next you're driving all that time you know you can probably get you get sleepy you get tired hungry all that stuff you need people to to wake keep you up keep you up and he thanked me for doing that but I thought I did I thought they did an amazing job and I would absolutely use them again I really like that company all right guys so when it comes to the remaining items that I had the stuff that I knew that I wasn't going to take outside of the few clothes that I have with me I packed two um, carry-on size, size cases uh, suitcases with me as well as a carry-on bag and a personal item because I flew southwest um, so I was able to check two bags so that stuff I didn't have to worry about so the items that I was not going to be taking with me the remaining items like I said I got rid of all the furniture um, only thing I had left was a mattress I had a big queen size mattress and I knew I was keeping that because I had kept that um, from when the couple that bought the the furniture the um, bedroom set I kept the mattress from that so I can have something to sleep on it was a really tall mattress really comfortable but I had to get rid of that because I like I said I wanted to sort of new when I got here so the remaining items that I had were basically outside of, like I said stuff I was going to take with me uh, on the plane was things that I, I knew I was not able to sell and I wanted to donate and other things like junk like after cleaning up and all that stuff I had junk so I knew that I was going to have to contact a junk removal company so I first started researching for junk removal on Google and all that stuff and I wasn't really finding what I was looking for and some of the some of the companies that I did find they were way too pricey for the little stuff that I had so First of all, like I said, remember, 
that I was still taking stuff out before the driver came and pick up my car. Um, and I was, it was kind of crunch time once he called me and contacted me and let me know that he was going to come get my car and he was coming to get it. So I was still taking stuff out. So, but before that, I end up contacting a junk removal company on a thumb, on a, on an app called Thumbtack. And I'm not really sure if you're familiar with Thumbtack, but they have like a lot of local businesses on there. Like um, they have junk removal businesses. They have lawn care businesses. If you need somebody to come in and um, mount a TV on the wall, all that stuff they have on there on Thumbtack. Uh, it's the local. So I end up con contacting a junk removal guy. Uh, company I just say on Thumbtack and I let them know that the only thing that I needed for them to pick up was my mattress and I had that 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 reservation already set up I wanted them to come get the mattress early on Wednesday morning because I'll be flying I would have been flying out to Las Vegas on that Wednesday uh, evening and I did no longer need the mattress but I wanted to still be able to sleep on it the night before um, so when it came down to the remaining of the stuff outside of the stuff that I donated there was some some pictures and a few lamps and stuff like that I ended up taking uh, to the Goodwill but all the other stuff was basically junk like I said um, once I realized that I was I had to had crunch time and I had to get this this driver in my car for the transport um, I end up having more junk than I expected outside of the of course the mattress so I had to contact the junk removal person and I told him that I had more stuff and he was like you know he's telling me Kelsey don't stress I got it whatever you got for me I will get it and I will price it and everything will be okay so that actually worked out exactly how he said come that Wednesday morning he was able to come pick up that stuff took the mattress out first all the other junk crap that I had he was initially going to charge me $75 just for the mattress but since I had to add on all the other stuff he let me know that he would charge me upward to $150 for the remaining of the junk removal which he did um, plus I gave him a little extra tip as well but he did an amazing job um it was a company called junket georgia that that yeah it was called junket georgia that the guy worked for and he had this big old truck he came and he pulled it you know backed it up i had a few steps in my last apartment and he was just able to get that stuff out it probably took him about 20 minutes it was just him by himself um and he did an amazing job it was it was amazing awesome i was so glad I was stressing about it because like I said because I was on crunch time when they had to get the car I was not able to get all the junk out but like I said he let me know don't worry about it I got it whatever you got I can get it for you let's do this so he got that done so I was left with a, a amazingly empty apartment just with myself my stuff that I was going to be taking with me so I was able to you know Uber to the airport and and all that stuff and I'm not going to really get into you know the actual movie myself process I'm just wanted to let you guys know what I did to get my stuff here the stuff that I had anyway um but that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video because of the fact like I said I did not have to I did not require a mover uh, didn't have to hire a moving company so because of the fact that I sold the majority of my stuff and was able to donate there was a lot of clothes and shoes and stuff I was able to donate and and toss if I didn't need it and didn't want it anymore I knew nobody would be able to to use it so I was able to get rid of it but it was pretty easy it was pretty easy by the grace of God this transaction this transaction this this transition this move to Henderson Vada has been fairly easy for me there was a few little issues with shipment and stuff like that once I got here with because of the fact that I had to order you know furniture and make sure I get I got everything and all this stuff but I'm not going to go into that that's it, it wasn't an issue with me it was an issue with this apartment it was an issue with the 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 a delivery company but like I said that's neither here nor there I'm not going to get into that we got all that solved everything worked out but that's what I wanted to tell you um how I did it how I'm how I pretty much sold everything and moved across the country um when it comes to pricing I think everything was pretty reasonable um it was twelve hundred and seventy five dollars to ship my car 
uh, which wasn't too bad. I'm not going to go into the pricing with my, my rent, prorated rent, all that stuff that I mentioned before. And it, like I said, it was 150 for um, plus a little tip for the junk removal. Um, no price for a mover. So it was pretty affordable for me. Um, I, the pricing that I was able to put on the furniture, it helped me to purchase new furniture and all that stuff. I'm still in the process of decorating. There's a lot of pieces and stuff that I have when it comes for when it comes to decoration. I was able to put everything together that I wanted to put, put together, all the furniture that, that needed to be put together. I didn't, uh, I ordered the furniture, but I didn't do any assembly, purchase any assembly and all that stuff, so I did all that stuff. The majority of it by myself, my parents, my parents are actually here in town now and we've been hanging out and you know putting decorations up and any other little furniture that i need to put up we've been getting that done so the move has been i'd say fairly fairly smooth um like i said by the grace of god it has been very fairly smooth um like i said i'm not really going to get into why i moved but I, this move for me had been pretty much almost two years in the making. I didn't start the actual process of moving until a couple months ago. Like, of course, you know, hiring the, the company for the for the actual uh, car shipment and stuff like that. I didn't start that, but I did start thinking about moving to Henderson, Nevada almost two years ago. Pretty much two years ago. I was able, before I... I when I started thinking about it, I actually already had started downsizing. Um, I didn't get rid of any furniture, but I had gotten rid of a lot of clothes and shoes and stuff and stuff like that. Uh, about two years ago, I started doing that because I knew just something in me just told me like this, this, this is it. We, we get ready to um, get up out of Georgia. But like I said, I'm not about to um, talk about the why. Yeah, I'll get into that in the next video. Um, but I did want to share with you how I I sold everything, most of everything, packed what I had, and and moved across the country. Um, it's been a fun process. It's still fun um, because I'm I'm loving living here. Like I said, I'm not going to go into that too much because I'm going to do the pros and cons of living here. But I just wanted to share that information. At this point, I'm just repeating myself. But I do want to thank you guys so very much for liking and watching this video. Um, if there's anything I missed, I may put it in the in the comments below or in the description box below. Go check that out. Um, but like I said, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching my video. I hope that you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And when you subscribe, please hit the notification bell so when I post new videos, you guys will be notified. I hope God blesses all of y'all. I love y'all. Deuces.